Hey, people, this is the time. I mean, we are legitimately worth a shit this year. Oh, yes, indeed. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, outsiders of all ages, it is a What Are You Drinking Wednesday. I'm trying to contain my nervousness because we may very well be talking to the greatest punter that ever lived a little bit later in the Outsiders tonight. We'll get to that. But first, let's get you the Outsiders brought to you by Poncho. You know what this is, kids? That's Colt in the Fort Davis right there. That's right. That's Colt in the old Fort Davis and uh, one of those bad boys might be headed my way. I am not going to look as good as Colt is, but I might, you know, I'll try. I'll look at maybe half as good as Colt. And uh, the Fort Davis and many of the other designs are waiting on you. PonchoOutdoors.com. As you see, two of the outsiders, the left side of your outsiders tonight, rocking the poncho gear. And we'll start with your upper left. It is Chance Mock. Rocking a poncho. He's got the hair rolling tonight with no hat. What's up, sharp dress man? Oh, you know, some of us have to work these stupid jobs so that we can come back and hang out with you guys, mm-hmm. which, which is what I love. You know, that I'm the opposite. I work so that I can work with y'all. Like, that's the whole point. <laughs> it's a beautiful thing, but hey, hope y'all all had a great President's Day. Maybe you bought some new mattresses, but somewhere along our glorious history, President's Day became celebrated by buying mattresses at 50 percent off what says america like buy a new mattress right yeah i'd make fun of it except i think i sleep on a bed that might have been a president's day stale <laughs> bed well, if, I'm, if i'm not mistaken it, it's kind of tying the symbolism from the america for loco that i drank last week which it. by the way if i say anything stupid tonight it's because my brain is still rotted from oh. it. it's not that i got intoxicated i drank way more that night and all weekend but Jesus Christ, that Four Loco puts you in a fog. Yeah, that was a good night. Thursday show was uh, was good as Bo paid off the Four Loco bet. Your lower right tonight, the bacon man tonight is Jason Dick. How we doing, sir? Uh, excellent, uh, friends. Don't you guys know every president ever elected to office in the United States appreciated a good mattress? Okay, that's why they designated that the mattress holiday. All right, That's got to be it, Learn right? history, yeah. Chance. Come on. Isn't yeah. there like a, I can't remember what it was. There's either some sheet sets or a bed, like the purple bed or some sheet set where three former presidents all sleep on it. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> that's clearly what I need right there. But the president sleeping on his shit can hook me up. Yeah, it's good stuff. They say Truman's sleep number was a 55, but that's just that's just rumor. <laughs> All right, your lower left tonight is the country gorilla, Bo Edge. He's also rocking a very sharp poncho shirt tonight. How are you, Bo? I am excellent. You know, I've got my, got my brown water, got my cup, got no questions for the punter. I'm just going to let you hit him, Man, and then yeah. Jason will ask him something dumb, and Chance will ask him something smart, and then I'll just sit here and smile. See, I'm so nervous that Shane Leckler may be joining us earlier. I forgot to ask what everybody's drinking. It's a what are you drinking Wednesday? We didn't have the Monday show. I'm all confused. I got brown water tonight. What do we got, Chance? Uh oh, I got the Galveston Brewery Mardi Gras Blonde Ale. We're, mm. we're celebrating, you know, Mardi Gras was last Tuesday in my home. We still have a beautiful Mardi Gras tree up. And uh, I spent the weekend in Galveston. I got me some of this Mardi Gras Blonde. So, in order to uh, celebrate the people that live south of Houston, that will be on the show tonight. I'm going with the Mardi Gras Blonde. Man, all I know is if my dad's watching tonight, I think I know what we're drinking next time we go to Galveston. That looked pretty tasty. Oh, it's delicious. Jason, Jason, what do you got going on tonight? I'm always well, scared to ask. I was I was inspired by the great Bo Edge's patriot, uh, patriotism uh, last week when he was drinking the red, white, and blue for Loco. Yeah. Uh, now, that beverage would not be safe in my hands, but I was in the grocery and I came across, I don't know if you guys are familiar uh, but I have a 3D energy drink. Oh, a, yeah. Oh, but, oh, uh, Chance does know the 3D energy drink. Yes. But if you hold at my gym, I don't know if I don't know if you can see. It's it's real small there. Uh, it says Liberty Pop. All right. I got a Liberty Pop. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's a 3D energy drink. Liberty Pop. Uh, so here I have not. Uh, oh, I'm not cracking. Let's, let's well, see this first taste. Come on. Let's know how the hell. Oh, big pull. Big pull. <sighs> It's good. Mm. Yeah. It, I, I feel the liberty coursing through my veins as we speak. That All is. Right, so, uh, so next week, I will tell you, for those of you that hang out in the gym, 
There's also C4, which makes a Liberty Pop flavor. So you need Ooh. to get that for next week. And then the following week, Ryzen has a Liberty Pop one. So you wow. have three energy okay. drinks to go, buddy. You're the only one of the four of us that spends any time in a gym. You know what the funny part is? That I can tell you the flavors of all the different energy drinks. Yeah, that's a little weird. C4 was the one that Bijan was a part of that had like Skittled flavor and Starbucks they flavor. Yeah, they have that. That's the one. That's yeah, because yeah. I mix those with vodka once in a while. They're pretty damn good. I tell you what, that's the only energy drink. This is an endorsement or a derogatory comment. You figure it out. It's the only one I've ever had that made my face tingle. All right. Ooh, <laughs> yeah. Like my my face was tingling after drinking so it. So. Alien in there. But I will tell you, Bo, to your point, real quick, since it is a what you drinking Wednesday, that is a piss poor idea to put C4 with anything liquor. Because as our buddy Kyle Shanahan, I can to this day cannot smell a Red Bull and not throw up. Because oh. Kyle got me into these things called Red Bulls and vodka. Oh no! One, one's an upper, one's a downer. You come home after night at Sixth Street after about fourteen Red Bull and vodkas. You got one foot on the floor. You're on the bed. Your head is spinning, but you're hammered and can't pass out because oh, yeah. <laughs> your body's just pulsating with point. bullshit. So, All right? The, Why did you go home, man? That was the mistake. <laughs> thank you, Mister Dick. The whole point of that drink is so you get to keep having fun. You don't have to have fourteen of them. You can make a glass like this. Take the MVP vodka, just like that, although I would prefer the melon berry because I have the melon berry in the other cabinet. Delicious with a Monster or a Red Bull, but just one. Just one. Just one is a I good idea. I don't have that speed, Bo, number yeah. one. <laughs> number two. No, it's anybody... not the vodka that you cut out, dipshit. It's the Red Bull. After the first <laughs> Red Bull, then don't you're done. See, see, the funny thing is those that know me know because, like Jason said, you're not supposed to go home. I'm not a late night guy. Like no. I'm, a, I'm an early morning. Bo can have a party going on in his house. I've done this. He's had 25 people over. I pulled the blanket up on the couch, which is where I sleep when I'm at the edge household. I pulled and I just go to sleep. The party's yeah. still going on around me. <laughs> I'm done. Oh, we there was one time I mean we literally had 25 people out in the back playing music, throwing cornhole. It's two in the morning. Might not even been two in the morning. They're like, what is wrong with Chance? I'm like, oh, it's past his bedtime. He's laying on the couch like snuggled <laughs> up, just losing him. I'm done. I'm telling you. All right, Bo, I think it is time for us to send the reminder to oh. Mr. Leckler that okay. uh, 915 is on the way. I've never in my life seen Chad Hastings so prompt with like the it clicked and he like cut off. It was like a hard break. We need to send the reminder. Hey, to I'm Mr. just Leckler. When a guest asks for a reminder, you know, it's nothing to do with who the guest is. They all get the same treatment, Chance. That's at least what I'm going to tell myself. What um, I love is that our guest, assuming that he comes on, his texts are phenomenal. Now he's great. Absolutely. Last week he texted me on the Wednesday that we were we weren't we had no show, and he's like, "I'm ready. Let's go." <laughs> I'm like, no, it's Valentine's Day. We texted him we were going to do this. Well, so what? I'm ready. Let's go. <laughs> I don't care. Let's do it. And I, I was like, care. no, it's next Wednesday. He goes, oh, okay. That's probably good. I may have already had too many. There you go. But then this morning, he texts me. It's been at noon. He's like, hey, how long is this interview? I may need to start pacing myself. I've been doing yard work with a few breaks. <laughs> Uh, we'll be one of his breaks today. No problem. Uh, and I said, I'm jealous because my job doesn't allow me to have those kind of breaks. He goes, it's mm. perfect. Breaks are the best. We like the kind of guests that really embrace the What Are You Drinking Wednesday. And we feel like Shane Leckler is going to be one nope. of those folks. Uh, before we get there, uh, let's get a little bit from the good folks over at Covert, one of our many great partners around these uh, around these parts at Orange Bloods Live. It is Covert Ford. Let's hear a little bit from them. Hi, I'm Kimberly Covert. Since 1909, my family has been committed to delivering the best deals on Fords in the state of Texas. Fully customizable and with an assortment of accessories, the Ford Bronco Sport is ready for any adventure. It's the ultimate off-road vehicle. Shop our incredible in-stock selection or speak with one of our custom order specialists to design the Bronco Sport of your dreams. Covert Ford is your Bronco headquarters. Come see us today and experience the Covert Advantage. CovertFord.com. 
Not a bad looking Bronco at all. Hope everybody's having a good Wednesday. Shout out to everybody in the Specs chat tonight. Glad to see everybody. Uh, this is not how it works. Mitchell, it's not every week. Bo, Bo's not just <laughs> slamming four locos for no reason. That's not happening. That's tomorrow. And Sandman, you're right. I might. I might. I've had some pretty cool interviews over the years. Begin to interview Shane Leckler is going to be damn cool if it uh, if it does happen. Oh, yeah, unless he, him and Michael Griffin are in codes and they're like texting each other like, hey, let's see how long you can fuck with them. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> no, because in fairness, Shane came on. Yes, it he did. It wasn't his fault that his neighbor's yeah. Wi-Fi that he was trying to steal was shitty. That is right. not his fault. <laughs> and it was, and, and I did not technically screw up enough to where he couldn't get on. So it wasn't my fault, even though yep. he swore at me a little bit, but that's all right. I deserved it. And then <laughs> the neighbors got sworn at because they didn't have good enough Wi-Fi from a distance. So tonight we're told he's on Wi-Fi he's paying for. Yeah. So that could be exciting. That could be exciting. And ladies and gentlemen, it's just about that time. And if it's just about that time for a great interview, it is brought to you by the good folks at Last Stand Hat. See Bo's hat right there? That's a Last Stand hat. That's one of those outsider hats. I got one of those outsider hats as well. There are 12 different designs. If you want to grab an outsider's hat, use the promo code OUTSIDERS10 or get yourself any of those other great Last Stand Hats, the True Fans brand, bringing you all the great interviews like this guy. Ladies and gentlemen, he is the greatest punter that ever lived. He is Shane Leckler. We will get him high set. You know what, fellas? We may need to, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe we need, is this what we need to do? Is this what we need there, to do there right we here? Go. There do we, we go. need to get a little Shane Leckler on, just right on top there? What up, Mr. Leckler? How are you? Oh, you see that longhorn in the background? Oh, come on. Uh -huh. Oh, my God. That's how we hang them. <laughs> well, hey, if wow. you're going to hang them, hang them low. Yeah, yeah. Well, I hope it falls every morning I walk down here. Oh so, Shane, we, we got to say, we appreciate you coming on into what could be slightly called enemy territory, although our – main host chad graduate so there is you know some maroon in our ranks but you were brought to us by your cousin ty harrington who we appreciate him getting us connected to you and, and we're gonna have a lot of fun i just got off the phone with todd probably five minutes ago he's uh he's doing all right man miss that guy i ain't seen him in a minute so Shane, uh, let uh, let everybody know what Bo was telling us that uh, there was some yard work going on with some breaks today Late breaking news. How did the yard work go? How'd everything come out? Yard work went well. Got the weeds pulled as many as I wanted to. I took plenty of breaks and then, you know, smoked the pork buck and, uh, you know, just had a few beers. I mean, it's just a normal day. I don't know what you guys did, but that's what I did. <laughs> and as we could, as we could see, what are you drinking on a Wednesday? Is uh, a little Miller Light tonight? Is that, is that I, I drink Miller Light usually mm, every night. I mean, okay. that's 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 my choice. Um, that's I used to drink uh, back back before all the issues, before all the bullshit. I drank Bud Light, but so did all my friends, and my friends forgot to buy, so they would never buy Bud Light. And so they would come down to Rockport and get on the boat and they would just start drinking my beer. And I was like, well, fuck if they, let me find something they don't like. And they, none of them like Miller Lite. So <laughs> they're wanting to cooler. That's a good plan. That's a good way to do hey, it. I'm telling you, I was a, I was a Miller Lite drinker all through college, mm. but it was only because of Rusty Wallace. And when Rusty Wallace retired, I said, fuck this shit. I'm going to go to something different. And I ended up on the Bud Light train just out of protest from Rusty leaving. <laughs> hey, it, 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 everybody's got a reason. But I, I'll tell you what, if it's cold, it, I'll take it. I don't discriminate from anything. Shiner Bach down there in Shiner, Texas, those guys got some good shit, man. <laughs> That is good stuff. That is good stuff. Chance, why don't we start? We'll, we'll start player to player. What do you got for Shane Leckler tonight? So, Shane, the first thing is, number one, even as a Longhorn, watching you, it was it was a blast watching you. I've never seen somebody be able to have as much impact on a game from your position as anybody out there. So it's a thrill to talk to you. Let's bring this whole rivalry back into it. You and I both played in it. 
it meant a lot. Now there's been so much time off that it really drives me nuts. I feel like it's part of Texas is you have Thanksgiving and you pick a side. You're either orange or you're maroon, right? And to finally have it coming back, how excited are you? I, I'm, I mean, you remember it like I did. Like when you went to high school, or no, when you were elementary or junior high, recess, are you a Longhorn or an Aggie? And that's how you played recess. That's how we played recess. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, it didn't matter. Like that's how that's how the team got divided. Who's Longhorns, who's Aggies? It wasn't two team captains pick. We didn't have time for that shit. There was only 45 minute recess. So whoever's on AM, Aggie, or like the Aggies or Longhorns, that's how we went. And it didn't matter. And believe it or not, I was on the other side the whole time. I you can ask Ty, you can ask anybody. My bedroom was painted burnt orange and white and white. I wanted to go play baseball for Cliff, and that's all I wanted to do. And little – anyways, let's get back to it. We'll get back to this later. But <laughs> as far as this game coming back to not only the state of Texas but to the United States, this is the best. I don't give a shit. They can say Michigan, Ohio State. They can say whatever they want to. You want to get a rivalry back, this is the one. The saddest thing in the ever happened in college football – is generations miss this. My kids don't even know what this means. Mm-hmm. And yeah. that that is such bullshit because that should have never stopped. If you look at Florida, Florida State, well, that's SEC, ACC. They play every year. We should have found a way to do it. And, and it really irritated me so bad whenever they said, nope, and we pulled off. I was mad at A&M just as like I was mad at Texas. I, I was mad at both. I'm like, you got to figure this out. This is bullshit because you're taking all of those awkward Thanksgivings are now just going to be awkward all day. At least you could have a badass football game in the middle of them. You know? <laughs> somebody got to have a good Thanksgiving. Somebody got to have yeah. a bad Thanksgiving. Jeez. Oh There's man! Some hell of drinking games that come out of it, though. I can promise you that. No, oh, that man. Was... I did the old Taylor Swift one on Super Bowl. I was like, "Geez, all right." Got a every time. <laughs> Luckily, she only showed up five times in the freaking game when I was watching. So, Shane, since you're mentioning the rivalry, for people that don't realize the time frame, you were at A and M ninety six to ninety nine. So, by my count, that's two and two in that game. Give me a story from both sides. Give me a story from how great it was to win and a story from how how bad it was to lose. Well, like um, the game when Ricky when Ricky broke the record in Austin, you know, like you don't want to be part of history, but you're part of history. Um, that was that was awesome. I, I, I knew Ricky, didn't know Ricky. Like who who really knows Ricky? You know, what I mean, I got to know him. Was Ricky no you know, Ricky? Know Ricky. Him, you know, like, <laughs> but um, you know, watching that game go down and. Uh, you know, it was a rainy day in Austin, and he breaks like three tackles, busts the record up there, and uh, that was awesome. But the one that really, really, really goes down in my mind, and I think I think most of the guys uh, that we played against, like Stuttered and all those guys, the game at A&M after the bonfire fell when the University of Texas came out and played our fight song, it really wasn't a rivalry anymore. It was kind of like a brotherhood. Like, let's all stick together. Man, that one meant a lot to me because I was going in my senior year, and that was when that was that was me like, all right, we got this. You know, we can we A and M, we're gonna get through this. And it damn sure helps to have the friendship of the guys in Austin. And I don't want to get sentimental on the whole thing because it's still a freaking rivalry football game. And for us to come up and win it at the end. I'm not taking anything away from you guys, but I mean, we did send over food poisoning to Major Applewhite and make sure he got sick <laughs> that night, and uh, we got to face Sims instead, which was a little bit, a little bit easier. Um, don't want to bust this bubble. He's on ESPN probably tonight. He'll talk shit about me after he sees this. But it's okay. <laughs> um, anyway, so that's just how that whole thing went down. Loved it. Well, that's that's the difference between a rivalry with hatred and a rivalry that's like a brotherhood like you described. It's like big brother and little brother fighting, and I'm not saying which goes into which corner. The one mm-hmm. thing both Aggies and Longhorns can agree on is that Texas Tech can eat a bag of dicks, and so can Oklahoma. <laughs> we'll fight each <laughs> other, and we'll go wrestle each other in the front yard, but we don't like the other ones because they're just petty and stupid. 
At least yeah. we have a basis for our rivalry. <laughs> I agree. If I got hit by one more fucking tortilla down in Lubbock, I would swear I would never go back to that city again. As a matter of fact, one of my kids was getting recruited by them, and my, my oldest daughter, to go play softball. I'm like, I don't care if they give you the entire city. You're not going. <laughs> you can go to University of Texas all you want. You can go do whatever you want. We ain't going to Lubbock. <laughs> I used to, uh, my kids, you can, you can ask Razor to this day. I've told them Send the day they were born. I will, whatever it takes, I will pay for you to go to whatever school you want to go to when you go to college. As expensive as it is, how many jobs I have to take? If you want to go to the University of Oklahoma, you better get a full ride because I ain't giving them sons of bitches one penny. <laughs> you know, Shane, I've been telling these Longhorn fans that they are not going to miss playing Texas Tech at all. Would you agree with me in the time the Aggies haven't been playing Tech? Have you missed it at all? Man, I tell you, that is a tough place to play, man. And I had one of my, I mean, uh, RC Slocum. If you ever guys get him on the show, he can tell you that he. I got hosed on that deal. Um, Corey Pulick was our starting quarterback at the time. I was a freshman, and uh, that week during practice, um, RC was like, "Hey, Shane, um, you're going to be a starting quarterback going to Lubbock. I'm like, all right, sweet, against Zach Thomas and uh, probably the best middle linebacker in the country at the time. This would be fun. <laughs> and uh, I go and take all all the one reps the whole week. Tell my mom and dad, hey, y'all go to Lubbock. That's my first start. Boom, here we go. I'm going to go down here, and we're going to see what happens. My parents, of course, they don't fly their teachers. They drive and um, – <laughs> They drive all the way, and they're like halfway there. We go, we go to the uh, to the airport. I'm on the team bus, and I get off the team bus, and RC goes, "Oh, uh, we're gonna redshirt you. You're gonna stay here." <laughs> <laughs> wow! I called my dad. I said, "Hey, dad, you gotta turn around." <laughs> How'd you get a hold of? We didn't have cell phones. Yeah. No, I called. I called. There was there was a the, the old flip phone. Or somebody? No, 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 no. They had that one that was on the on the on the floor that had the cord. Oh yeah, yeah. 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 They had that one. But the funny thing is, I had to page them. <laughs> they had to call me back. <laughs> oh my god! I never get that. So I page them, and mom, mom always said, you know, like, hey, if you really need us, just page nine one one, and we'll call you right back as soon as we can get somewhere to. Go. So it was a pager. They called me from a gas station. I said, hey, y'all might as well turn your ass around. It ain't going down this week. <laughs> wow. So that's, what, 95? That was 95, and I redshirted that year. That was Byron Lanspar, or Byron Hansbard, and they had uh, Zebby Lethridge. Zach, yep. They were a good football team back then. Yeah, uh, they, I mean, and Zach, and then Corey throws a pick, and then, I mean, I'm not saying I love Corey. I mean, dear part guy, whatever. But I, I thought I could have done – at least had fun. <laughs> hey, so, so wow. Shane, I, I got to say, and, and these guys know it, to me, R.C. Slocum is – and Mac Brown's my favorite coach. I love playing for him. But I have so much respect for R.C. Slocum, more than any coach that recruited me, any coach I ever played for prior or post-college. And I, and there's a reason for it, and it's not a story for the, for the interwebs. But – when I look at RC and what he embodied, he was AM. He embodied it. He was the, the fans loved him, the players you bought into what he did because what he was selling was true. It wasn't an act. Why has AM not been able to find the guy that fits that bill at AM? Well, I think it comes down to the whole. So after RC was fired, we hired the guy from TCU. Uh, Fran. Fran County. Fran. I'll be honest. That's a huge dip. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and for for us. And then when you do a huge dip like that, it takes you time to build. And then Stumlin came, and you got Johnny, and Johnny, and, you know, like, do all that. And then I think with Elko right now, we got Elko. To be honest, Nick Saban just got out of co college coaching. I don't think I would. You could hand me the fucking job right now. No, because there's too much thing, too many things going on. You got one. Once you get a kid on campus, 
Now you've got to only sign him. Now you've got to keep recruiting the same kid that you signed. It's unlike when me and you came in. You've got to recruit him all the way till he graduates. But you also got to recruit his replacement. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't like this whole this whole NIL deal, man. I don't know. But, I don't, but it, it, you can watch it. Look at Sark. Hell, I played against Sark. I played <laughs> against Sark, and I, I played, and he coached the Raiders when I was in Oakland. Sark looks forty years older than you did. Then. I'm like, God damn it, Sark. <laughs> well, but, hey. but Shane, don't you feel like? Is it not turning into you spend a lot of a lot of time in the league and these guys know the NFL is my it's my favorite, but it's becoming the NFL from the standpoint of every year you've got free agents turning over. You're trying to contract extension, restructure things like you really don't know. You know a lot of who's coming back, but it's you're always looking for the replacement. Well, I mean, it is. And then, then all of a sudden you've got these guys that are probably a fifth round, fourth round grade. They're going to take a pay cut. And God forbid when they learn what taxes are. Because <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if anybody's teaching them that part of it. So I don't know, man. It, it, it's a tough sled. I, I mean, these college coaches these days, I'm like, God dang it, man. It's almost just like be straight up honest with them and say, listen, if you're not good enough, get the hell out of here. If you're good enough, you can play here and, and build that university. You know, build, don't, don't pay them. Let, let's see how you perform first, you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm good friends with Dion and, and he's up in Colorado and, you know, Dion did a whole, like the whole spill, you know, like threw it all out there to everybody. And I'm like, God damn Dion. And he went uh, in there and like cut damn near everybody. everybody and brought in yeah. 80 something or 60 something new players, but you can do that, but you can only do that so long. Like right now, I think there is zero substance. There's a lot of there's a lot of flash in this whole thing, and it's still brand new to everybody. But there's zero substance, and I never thought I would give you know Lane Kiffin credit, you know. But Lane Lane coached me in Oakland for a couple of years, and I was like, God damn it, Lane, this is a little above you. But and that, what Lane's done down there, and what he is what he has said <laughs> is actually dead on. He's like, dude, I don't know if we can sustain this. And I, I looked at it, you know, drinking beer with some buddies at the, at the campfire the other night at the Deerleys when I tried to get all you guys and it all fell through. But I, t I told them, I was like, listen, if I was the SEC commissioner, I'd pull out the NCAA. I'd pull out. I'd make my own, my own yeah. thing and say, you keep your NCAA rules over here because we're going to break them all anyways. So just keep your, <laughs> your whatever. Everybody else wants to play whatever you want to play. And let's just make us a, a – 24 team deal all of a sudden all of a sudden they bring in michigan state and ohio state they even make 24 teams and break yeah. all the rules you want because they're broken anyways but but it's almost like the nfl and college have have flip-flopped right in the nfl you'd get all these rookie quarterbacks that would come out and sign for 25 million dollars well then they finally put a cap on the rookie the rookie pay right yeah. Well, now high school, I mean, they're coming in. They haven't proven shit, and they're already making all their money. It's almost like we we flipped. We did. We did. Jamarcus Russell. Jamarcus Russell got signed by the Raiders for about damn near ninety million dollars. Started how many games? Yeah. I punted twelve <laughs> times a game whenever he played. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we're talking with Shane Leckler on The Outsiders, brought to you by Poncho. Jason Dick, what do you got for Shane Leckler? Uh, Shane, thanks for being on the show. Uh, I want you to know that you're making Outsiders history tonight. I'm not positive that you're the first Aggie that we've had, probably so, but you are definitely the first punter that we've had oh. on the program. Uh, not exactly the most glamorous position. No disrespect, 19 years in the league, and I just looked, $34.8 million in career earnings. That's before all that... <laughs> sweet punter endorsement money uh i just want to know when when did you find out that you had the gift when did you learn hey i have what it takes to be the greatest punter of all time how did you choose punter my junior year in college um I, we were in we were in training camp junior year in college i ran it was weird ran a bootleg tiki hardeman booted out of it and pulled my quad on my kicking leg and i'm like and it was just i slipped and boom it was my fourth day in the camp 
And uh, I was like, God dang it, now I can't kick and now I can't, you know, the quarterback stuff, I'm fighting for that job and I wanted that job bad and um, I wanted to play quarterback. It's hard coming from high school, from a two-way high school where I came from where I punted, I kicked, I played quarterback, I played outside linebacker, I returned punts, I returned kicks. I never, I came off the field for kickoff return. That's the only time. Wow. To go into college and playing five snaps, I'm like, God dang, man, this sucks. And, uh, but my junior year on a bootleg, boom, I'll never forget it. Our our practice fields were under construction. We we're on a new field, boom, I slipped, tore my quad, and I tore it pretty bad. And um, and then I go through rehab, rehab, rehab. I'm trying to make the opener, and uh, RC comes in, and he's like, hey, no, he didn't come in. He called me to his office, and I went to him. And uh, so I go up to his office, he's like, Shane, I want you just to concentrate on punting. And I freaking about lost my shit. I was like, dude, he's serious. You're going to go with a good friend of mine. But, I mean, he was a good quarterback, Brandon Stewart, who got who transferred to us from Tennessee. Nice. And um, he's like, you know what? Just concentrate on punting and doing this. And I just like, dude, all right, I'm going to go across the tracks and go play baseball for Coach Johnson instead of doing this, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and uh, – that day, he was like, Shane, you can punt for a long time. I'm like, yeah, I got like two more years left. He goes, no, 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 no. Go put your numbers compared to what's going on, and um, you can punt for a long time. I did not know what he meant for an entire freaking career. So I went from pissed off at RC to the fact that RC text or called me once a month for 18 straight years. Wow. You know, and he reminded me of this conversation, you know, every time he's like, hey, remember when I told you, I'm like, yeah, I, 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 I just want to say when, when the time comes and you're up there giving a really nice speech, I hope you tell that fucking story. Oh, I will. No doubt. <laughs> I no hope doubt. And I hope RC is there too. <laughs> I do. I hope he's there because I, man, I was so pissed off at him and he knew it too. He was like, no, 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 relax, Shane, relax. I'm like that. So you really where are. where were you? I think you're probably a lot like me. I damn near enjoy playing on the road more than I did at home. Like I have fun with opposing crowds. I they I get more going when I'm at home. That's way too fucking comfortable, right? They tell you get off the couch and get uncomfortable. I like being in the post. Both both levels, college and in the NFL. What was the best atmosphere period to play in? I got a great story. Let me grab a beer. I got a great one. <laughs> Oh, that's the greatest answer I've ever heard. Shit, I'm getting a beer too. I'm getting Shane another party. Said, I've got a great story. <laughs> oh, that was quick. That was fantastic. Cheers. Cheers. Absolutely. Oh, man. That's a so, first, that's the first Can beer you hear me? Break. Can you hear me? Hang on. Oh, let's, yeah. make it. let's hear it. Where is okay, the best environment? Another beer too. Right, Shane's got, got his cool beer. Bar. Here we go. You got a cool bar in there. I like that. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so we're playing by far the the best atmosphere by far, and I'm not saying this because these cocksuckers just won it again. Playing at Arrowhead in Kansas City is by far the closest you can get to playing in college football. So that's – I mean, I got to do it once a year forever when I was with the Raiders. But one time I got a good one because we were down there – we were driving down, and Janikowski was like a sniper there. Man, he could make it any last minute field goal he could make it at Kansas City, no doubt. So we're, we're driving down, and Rich Gannon, this is the year Rich Gannon won the league MVP. This is the year we went to the Super Bowl and got beat by Tampa. But we, we go down, and we're driving, we're driving, and driving, and this big lady. So there's no room really from the sideline to the bleachers. And so the kicking net is like really fucking close <laughs> and he's left footed. So it really put his ass like right up because we're going like we're going north. So like he's really up close, you know, <laughs> like he's standing right there. And he kicks a couple of balls. I was like, oh, fuck. This lady just got some brand new chili cheese nachos. Uh -oh. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm she, she was a bigger lady in the. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the skinny ones don't usually order no, chili this, cheese nachos, this is the just crazy. for the record. So we're we're on the home team. I mean, we're the away team, so we got on white jerseys, right? 
We got a white jersey, and he's already like he dipped snuff the whole time. Like I never kicked a football in the entire NFL without dipping snuff in my mouth. He never did either. So he he doesn't know how to spit though. So it's it's already on his fucking jersey, like all dripping down. This lady, this lady grabs her nachos and just fires it at him, and he hit him like right underneath the chin. And it is it's slow, like as slow as it, you can imagine. Just very, and, it, and the clock's at like 46 seconds. We got one timeout. So <laughs> now he's, yell, he's yelling at the equipment crew, bring me a water bottle, water bottle. And he's like trying to squirt it off, man. It's fucking yellow and cheese and chili all the way down his pants. <laughs> then we, we drive down the field. We get to like the 40, the, the 35, whatever, rich. We stall out. We get third down. We're down by one. He fucking smashes it right to the middle. Boom! I go to get my high five. That motherfucker gone. He ran right back there. It's like fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Chance, you know about running to the yeah. opposing sideline and doing the head, 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 don't you? Back then, they didn't have like cameras like everywhere. So that guy's like trying to follow him, and he's running. And he's running. He's running. He's running. The guy gets right behind him, like. <laughs> wow. See, we were going to ask for a Janikowski story yeah. and it just kind of came up naturally. That's yeah. unbelievable. My next question was it just said Seabass go. Like that was going to be the question. Go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Dude, that guy was so amazing. So how One long of my best you... friends ever? Yeah, how long and... were you guys together? Like 10? Was it 10, 12 years? No, we were there together 13. Good grief. Okay. So we came in we came in together. We we were <laughs> we we come in together. We we're he was drafted first round. I mean, yeah, first round. I was drafted fifth in the same draft. Yeah. <clears throat> so we get there, and then we're supposed to be there for rookie minicamp and all this, but he had some legal problems, so he had to leave. And uh, <laughs> he went back to handle that, and then he came back, and we were roommates from 2000, and we lived together till 2003. And then we roomed together on the road all the way till 2010. <laughs> and after your fifth year in the league with the Raiders, you can get your own room. I was like, uh-oh. Because <laughs> I, I didn't trust myself to wake up. I damn sure didn't trust him to wake up. And if he didn't wake up, it was my ass. So I was like, nope, <laughs> we got the same room. And there were so many nights, so many nights. They come he would call me. He was like, hey, mess my bed up. <laughs> I was like, all right, I'll mess your bed up. Mess my bed up. <laughs> yeah, mess my bed up. Put some pillows under it. And I was like, Bass, they, they caught they caught you. He goes like, tell them to go fuck themselves. If they need another <laughs> kicker, they can go get one. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, uh, we had some stories, man. That was some funny shit. Oh good lord! And you Yo. held for him, and you would you held for him for his entire career with the Raiders? His whole career, I held I held for him at the NFL Combine, and um, when I first met him was in um, 1990, 1997, the Playboy All American in Phoenix is when I first met him, and we were together then, and then um, I think it was ninety eight or ninety nine. We played Florida State in the kickoff classic at the Meadowlands in New York. And so I hung out with him there for just a little bit, whatever. And then all of a sudden, boom, he was drafted the first round. I called him. I couldn't understand one word he said. So I hung up. And then I was drafted in the fifth. I was like, holy shit, we're going to the same team. Uh-oh, uh-oh. He, he, he gives Man. me, like, have you ever seen the movie The Replacements? No, oh, yeah. Completely Wiry. different body types, but that's uh, who he Completely different people. body types. But if Seabass could have ever kicked with a cigarette in his mouth, he damn sure would have done it. <laughs> wow. So you're saying you're saying every single kick we ever saw with Janikowski and you, both of you have dip in every time? Every single time. Okay. Did it help every on holding? You can, look, you can look at this. Just every zoom in on any picture of any, any time. <clears throat> and the bad thing about it is I was in – we were rookie minicamp before he got <laughs> before he got deported, before he got sent back to Florida State for some legal stuff. He was like, what are you putting in your mouth? I was like, Copenhagen. He was like, really? What What does it do? I'm like, I don't know. Here, try it. <laughs> and he turned green, threw up, laid back. And we're in the, like, you know, this is just a hotel room with two beds. And he was like, he was like, oh, my God, I feel like shit. 
And like 30 minutes later, he's like, hey, do you have any more? <laughs> oh, no. Because oh. that's, how, that's how I got it. Freaking Dan Campbell with Detroit. He was my college roommate. Dan was said, hey, you want some? I was like, yeah, I'll do it. And I freaking threw up everywhere. And 30 minutes later, I was like, hey, Dan, you got any more? <laughs> oh god! Oh. Hey, I, I mean, they BJ Johnson was on this show with us, and he was laughing his ass off telling this story because it's the same thing. He was like, "Mock, let me try one of those." It wasn't ten minutes later he was throwing up, and three minutes after that he was asleep on his fucking bed. <laughs> he didn't ask for a second though. <laughs> um, you, it's funny you say you dipped because I dipped in every game until. Kansas State, and I tried to run a linebacker over. I still think I won most of that battle, but I stood up, and when my chin strap went up, it shot the dip all in my teeth, and I didn't yeah. get the first down. And it was on our sideline, and I stood up, and Matt goes, what the fuck is that? I had never heard him say the word fuck. <laughs> <laughs> he said, go wash it out. I was like, I guess I'm switching to pouches during the game. <laughs> Yeah, see, see, Chance, what Leckler and Janikowski knew is their their chances of getting hit like that were a lot lower than yours. Oh, if I ever got hit like that, I would chew in somebody's ass on the sideline. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, Shane, you kind of answered a question I had earlier then. I'm going to say when you get into the Pro Football Hall of Fame, is there a better choice you could make on who could induct you than Sebastian Janikowski? I mean, that feels like the answer, right? I mean, it does, but, you know, like, I love that guy. But, you know, kind of like we talked earlier, you know, I owe a lot. I owe a lot, and I respect the man with RC so much, you know. Um, you know, if it ever did happen, and hopefully everything is okay with him and everything is good, I mean, I, I don't I don't know how I could choose somebody else. I mean, that guy, okay. he sat in my living room, recruited me. He came and watched – high school freaking football games in Schulenburg and bowling and all these places and, and <laughs> recruited shit. I came to basketball games. I'm like, what the, dude, you, there's better players out there than this guy. <laughs> and, uh, but man, I don't know. I, I mean, he'll definitely be at the party for yeah. sure. <laughs> Janikowski will definitely be at the party. Shane, so is is that the answer to you? Sort of teased it earlier. When you were a kid, you wanted to play baseball at, at, at Texas, and you wound up playing football at Texas A and M. How did the well, what's the story there? How'd you flip? Well, um, I really don't know. Like it, it kind of got down to um, I think my sophomore year in college, uh, my sophomore year in high school, we were playing down in Ganado, small two A high school. We were two A in East Bernard, and I hit a guy. I, I was playing linebacker at the time. Hit a guy and tore my AC joint, my right shoulder, and I had just. That summer, I went to the Reds. Like, you know how the Reds are like, all these Major League Baseballs have these like tryouts, kind of like where you can just kind of go. And, you know, and I, I snuck in because I was only 13. And um, then all of a sudden, I make it, and there's only like, they're like, hey, we need you to stay. I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> um, all right, I'll stay, but I can't throw because I got to go throw my little league game tonight. But I was throwing, you know, the, the big, like the, the big league distance, but I had to go throw. 42 feet <laughs> that night. So, and they're like, Hey, can you stay in it? But the whole time when Ty, when Ty was at Texas and he was there with, with Zeke and with, um, with Roger and, and Billy Bates and all, all those dudes, man, that was my, that was my guys, you know, like I watched those guys. Like, like, I got Bates, Bates gave Ty his glove to give to me. And, you know, it's like, yeah, dang, and he goes into the World Series, hits a home run, right-handed home run, left-handed that year, and I'm like, oh fuck, I, like, this is this is the only place I want to be, and um, I wanted to play baseball, play baseball, play baseball, play baseball, bad, and uh, I mean, I never played other than like um, Babe Ruth and like that. I didn't do all the select stuff that's going on now. I didn't, I didn't, I don't think we had it then. If we did, I don't, I didn't know about it. But, uh, you know, play like Connie Mack and Babe Ruth and all that and did the Babe Ruth World Series deal up in Alamogordo, New Mexico and all this shit. But as time kept going by, you know, Ty, Ty was a big influence in my life on, on how to do things the right way. And I felt like how the University of Texas 
handle tie, handled all this, handled the championships and, and all that. It was very respected. I respected it big time. And I always said, you know what? I could play for Coach Gus any day of the week. You know, I mean, he was my kind of guy. Mm-hmm. You know, I only was around him a couple of times, but I always felt like he was hard-nosed, very honest. It's like, dude, I can do that. If that's all he wants is you to bust your ass and play hard, well, I can do that. And uh, so, yeah, my room was painted burn orange and white, and uh, that's where I was headed until I chose football. Then the recruiting deal got a little different. <coughs> and that's whenever um, Makovic was there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, We can understand why you didn't want to go play for Makovic. Uh, uh, all right. Sh- hang, now, wait, hang on, Shane Leckler. We're not quite there yet. Get, are, you, are, are you taking us over the finish line, or is the finish line, does it have, like, you know – police tape across it and we can't get over there like what what what's what's the ultimate answer no like i mean i always wanted to play both lsu offered it a <clears throat> and half ass offered it <laughs> texas didn't and then so i was like all right so i went on all my recruiting trips i went to i went to notre dame I went to Texas, I went to LSU, I went to a and I went to Florida State. And uh, when I walked in the building, Makovic was recruiting me. That's James Brown was the quarterback <laughs> at the time. And uh, he was like, man, we got a good quarterback. And um, Would you like to play fullback? And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> would I like to play fucking what? <laughs> <laughs> I looked at my dad. My dad was sitting in a chair, in a leather chair right in front of his office, those two leather chairs. My dad's sitting right there. I stood up. I said, Mr. McAvick, I appreciate it. I won't be needing my hotel room tonight. And Whoa. Was, okay. <laughs> All right. Wow. Yep, that enough. was the end of that story. That there it is. Out. I, I, I could tell you sometime offline, my dad had a very similar recruiting trip, but it was with a guy named Daryl Royal. And that, <laughs> my dad... That's why my dad ended up at Texas Tech, which is <laughs> funny that I was born in Lubbock and look where I am today. <laughs> there it is. All right, boys. Uh, anybody got any else? Anybody else got anything for Shane Leckler uh, before we let him go tonight? Where, where, where well, I, asked, I had one I more. Asked, wait, come on, bring Bo, it, bring it. I got nothing but beer here. Let's wait, go. before <laughs> Bo gets to a serious question, I've got to ask because I'm a Buffalo Bills. I'm a Bills Mafia Bills fanatic. Did you ever have a chance to punt in Buffalo? Oh, yeah. I put it up there a couple times. What, what do you think about my mafia family up there, man? Come on. Be nice to us. It is badass. <laughs> when you roll in there, it's old school. The stadium is old school. Everything's old school. When you come in on the bus on the outside corner, whoever's sitting on the on the right side of the bus is just eggs going pow, 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 pow. <laughs> And then there's tables being broke. As soon as you come by, they all jump off their cars on the tables, like in front of you. It's, it's awesome. Go if you haven't been. Go and just. Oh, do it. I, I take my son every year for Christmas. That's that is his oh. Christmas present. I take him up there. We we, with the first one we went to was a snow globe game, and the boy he grew up in Texas. He doesn't see much snow. He was like a kid in a fucking candy shop, dude. I could, he made snow, he made little, we got no bullshit. We got 32 inches the 24 hours before the game. And we get to our seats and he's making a snowman out of the <laughs> snow in our seats. I mean, he's just having a freaking blast. That's awesome. See, like, I don't want them to build a new stadium. It's like, still some open people air. need to start keeping their shit the same. It's still open air. I know, but. I mean, not I like the old, I like the old bowl up there. It's, <laughs> I'm it's, 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 it's not punter friendly at all, but I don't punt anymore, so I don't give a shit. I like the atmosphere. I know you <laughs> saw what happened to Martin this year. He tried to punt and run down a guy, and next thing you know, yep. Oops. <laughs> Bo, what do you got? Well, so Shane, from the first time I met you, which was shit, dating ourselves now, I want to say 25 years ago at a house that I owned, you came up to visit some of your friends from East Bernard during a week where you were practicing and you showed up with a 12 pack of Miller light. We're like, don't you have practice? And you said, well, coach told me to kick a couple and then I'd get the hell out of here. So you showed up there and we had this massive tree in our front yard. And I don't know if you remember the name, Daniel Webster. Oh yeah. I know Daniel. Yeah. Daniel was my roommate at the time. And, and we had a way 
that you couldn't kick it over. Then you kick it in, and we were sophomores in college or some bullshit. He goes, he'll kick it right over that tree. Then he'll throw it over that motherfucker. And sure enough, <laughs> you pop a beer, put it right over the tree, then throw it over the tree, drink the 12 bags, and I'll see y'all next week. <laughs> yep. Go ahead, but, I got practice my, next day. Yeah, exactly. My question is, though, watching the NFL now, because I think your career – no bullshit deserves jj watt said on the pat mcafee show pat mcafee agreed when jj was asked who the most nfl hall of fame worthy player he played with was and you were his name he said by far the guy that deserves that had the most talent at his position was shane but the question is is there anybody you see kicking now that you see as a punter that you consider an equal to the you and the ray guys of the world because there aren't many that are in the club that you're really in i mean you average 47.3 a kick yeah, I mean, there's there's a few guys. I mean, there's 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 always going to be that group. I think the game has changed a little bit. Um, fuck the guy you guys had in Texas is in Seattle. That's something that's got a live leg. You know, like he's going to put up big big numbers, and he's kicking in the worst stadium to kick in. I mean, you know, like he's going to he's going to put up big numbers. Um, you know, there's always, there's always, I think it kind of goes in waves, to be honest with you. Like, there was Ray, and then there was me and Mike Cypress and, and um, you know, Brian Mormon and all uh, that whole group. Now, this whole group is battling, and then they play the game a little bit different than I did. Um, you know, they're big time, hang time guys. Worried about their net, not me. I'll fucking bang that son of a bitch in the end zone all day. <laughs> but it's like, you know, they just do, you know, it's all about, it's all different. But, um, you know, like even uh, McMahon or McMahon or whatever, that was at AM that went to the Jets and now he's in Philly, I think. Like that guy, when he came out of college, he was probably the next best thing. And all of a sudden it just kind of tapered down. So it's hard to say who the next like breakout real guy is going to be because I think when I left the game, when I left the game is a different era. I mean, we're talking, you know, it's only seven years ago, but I think it's a different group of guys now. And um, I still appreciate what they do, but sometimes they're too fucking careful. Like they're instead their, their coaches are on their asses so bad about put the ball inside the 20. Then motherfuckers are kicking on the 18 or 19. Now, when I was told to kick inside 20, I'm, I'm talking about the one and the two. <laughs> you know, and if it went in, fuck it, it went in. But all of a sudden, that one time it doesn't, you're on the one or the two. Just like in the playoff game uh, the other night, the, D- the Detroit game, that guy hits a fucking banger. And it bounces straight up, and all of a sudden they kick it in the end zone, and they t- step on the line. If they don't do that, that game's different. And if Dan doesn't go for it, but um, <laughs> <laughs> that's just how that goes, you know. Like there's there's guys that I was a big time risk reward guy. These guys are let's please everybody, you know. Let's let's put it inside. Let's put it on the eighteen, and everybody's gonna give me a high five. No, I was I was we were different back then. I think so. I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know if I even answered your question, but my thing no. is I don't really have a name for you because when I watch these guys, I'm like, dude, why didn't you push that envelope further? And then if you don't push it further, I'm sorry, but I don't, I'm not going to remember your name. <laughs> well, no, I, I think you got the name I was looking for without insinuating it when you mentioned Dixon in Seattle because I think Dixon he's got can, an incredible Dixon can amount smash of talent. Imagine putting Dixon in Houston oh in, a, in, in, in a controlled <laughs> environment. Dude, if he didn't have to kick such a heavy football every time, every time, put yeah. him, put him, put him in Houston, put him in Dallas, put him in. God forbid, don't put him in Denver. He'll blow every one of my records away. Ooh. Don't put him in Denver. That shit's easy <laughs> to kick up there. You can miss, you can look at one. It's gonna go fifty. <laughs> hey, I watched that guy put him win a damn. Put him down in New Orleans, somewhere with like a defense, like you know. A How kind of a punter do you have to beat him? Man, that's a guy I'm looking yeah. for. As soon as he hit free agency, I would freaking cut him a check. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he won MVP of a bowl game. Now, the one that's yeah, indicative of how bad that. the offense was that yeah. day, but he won MVP of a bowl game Ooh. based on his punting. Hey, hey, I, I'll tell you, today I was talking to 
my buddy Tillman Holloway, who played offensive line for us at Texas, and we were reminiscing about the game that I got benched, which was a whole lot of fun to talk about. But <laughs> he was like, yeah, well, you know how shitty it was after you left the game? I got offensive player of the game. I was like, <laughs> well, at least I got that going for me, bro. Appreciate you. Awesome. You're welcome. That is fantastic. <laughs> Jason, you got one more for Shane? Uh, do you have a great Dan Campbell story for us? What, you guys were college roommates? Surely uh, you, you got something on Dan. Uh, I mean, how much time you guys got? Uh, it, 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 <laughs> all the time. We'll, 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 we'll rip the clocks first down. First, I'm going to talk really good about him. Mm. One of the best human beings I know. One, what he, he, there's no act. Everybody thinks that his his antics and his bite their kneecaps off and all that shit. There's no, there's no. Um, I just had a pop up. My kids' chemistry, great. <laughs> so, how do you do? How we do? Uh, Open today. It's, today. <laughs> it's ninety five. It's good. All right. So, hey, you know it's what? not like he he doesn't. Act, that's him. He's he's fucking crazy. I will say that. <laughs> but do I love that guy? Oh my gosh. If there was one phone call I had, it's going to him. Hmm. And I will tell you this when Dan was, um, oh shit. I don't think I can say this on the yeah, radio. <laughs> Nobody watches this. Don't worry. <laughs> Y'all remember the 98 bonfire? Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. Whenever he said what he said and he had to apologize to the president of the University of Texas before he could play. Oh wow! I forgot. Uh, y'all might that. just look that up. Just leave this. Oh out. my! I forgot that. I Not don't remember. Me. I, had, I had thought of that, but it, <laughs> Dan was. I remember the statement. It was Dan that said that. Mm-hmm. I forgot that. <laughs> <laughs> he gave it a good long step. That was Campbell. I totally forgot that story. Is it so, true, Jane? Anyways, Jane I don't let's just leave that alone. Yeah, we might um, want to leave that alone. He, now, I for- he went. He went to where were we? We went, so when they, they called me to do like an interview about him and I, I fucked the story up because I, it was, it was Steve McKinney that actually did it. And I thought it was Dan, but um, Dan was with Steve when it happened. So we had a Texas recruit in and I say his name and uh, we went to a party and Steve was driving and the guy, so it's Steve sitting and he's driving, Dan's on the window. It's a single cab Chevrolet truck. So there's a recruit <laughs> in the middle on a stick shift, too. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and then they said, like, hey, are you going to come to Andy? He was like, no, I think I'm going to go to Texas. And, and it, was, it was an out of, like, an out of, out of the city limit party. Kind of like, so they just pulled the fuck over and, and asked him to get out. And they just left. <laughs> Hey, and I thought it was a joke. I thought they were going to say, yeah, and then we went back and got him. Wow. <laughs> and they never saw him again. Oh, my God. <laughs> somewhere on the outskirts. Yeah, just somewhere, somewhere, somewhere by the Rebel Cafe in Hearn. Wow. There's a recruit at 2 in the morning. Was, so I think it was a fucking out. past Hearn. <laughs> wow. That's crazy. Oh, he was so- probably walking by deer feeders and deer stands all the way home. <laughs> Damn. Shane, I'd forgotten this. I was reading through the bio. Is it true you threw a touchdown pass to Dan Campbell on a yep, fake field goal? Yeah, and Dan talks shit about that pass. He always is like, oh, was, like, you read back through all the bullshit. Like, I just did it the other day because somebody's like, hey, you threw a touchdown pass. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to look that shit up. It was against Texas Tech at home. And Dan was like, oh, it took forever for the ball. I like, Motherfucker, I'll put it right on his chin like that. <laughs> but he wanted to just talk shit because I was his roommate. And the cool thing about Dan is, I will re- I will request him to be on your show. But Dan, whenever we went to college parties or we hosted parties at our house, which we had no money, his parents had no money, my parents were teachers, we had fucking no money. And whatever our per diem was, is what we spent. So we could always, Dan could always buy a handle of Jim Beam. And it was just Jim Beam. And he would just go, pop the cork and throw in the trash. And you fucking walk around and pour it in everybody's mouth. And, he <laughs> and, it, and, and you couldn't go to bed until it was gone. 
<laughs> I'm like, dude, are you fucking serious? It's just me and you and half the bottles left. This is going to be terrible. Uh, <laughs> this, that's that's so much better than Hold my two One more, one more, one more, I got to tell you. So we go to fucking Metallica concert. All right, so Dan does that shit one night. I got one more beer. <laughs> one more Hold beer. On. There's a there's a Metallica story coming okay. from we Shane Leckler for him to tell a Metallica Dan Campbell and Chad. You got to ask him to get us Dan Campbell, Aggie to Aggie. This is yeah. the so anyways, we greatest go, lead we, in ever. We have this party this night and like everybody comes to our house and we we know we're getting thrown out anyways. Um, but the the good thing is is the the house that we were going to get thrown out of or the apartment was still under Steve McKinney's name, so it didn't really fucking matter. <laughs> To us, but we were going to get asked to leave. Anyways, we knew that, so we had a big party, and we had trash can punch. And when I say trash can punch, a real trash can punch, like a fucking whole trash can. <laughs> and somehow, about midnight, there's like no drywall left in the house, and there's the trash can punch is all spilled over. <laughs> we have to go to a Metallica concert the next morning. He's he bought all the tickets. Him and his brother Daryl, they bought these tickets, and I'm like, fuck, I feel like ass. I'm like, you know, you just sweat all night, and you're like, dude, I just want to do eat Taco Bell and do nothing. <laughs> Anyways, we wake up, and he loves Headfield and Metallica. He, that's his jam. I'm like, dude, this fucking sucks, and. Um, he finishes the bottle of Jim Beam, and we get in the car at 8 o'clock in the morning to go to the Woodlands Pavilion. And he opened another one on the way. Oh. <laughs> and he's, we, we, have, we, have, we have seats that are only like eight rows from the thing. Mind you not, my head wants to pop out of my hat so bad. <laughs> I just want to crawl. I just want to be home. Like you know, you know when those nights you just want to be with your mom. <laughs> you know, just, <laughs> those mornings where you're like, dude, I just give anything for a biscuits and gravy and couch time. Uh, I'm in a Metallica concert. <laughs> it's fucking horrible. So, anyways, I go through this and we we do the whole concert. And man, he's up there and he has long hair at the time. And he's like headbanging. I'm like I'm. Dry heaving, he's in band. I'm like, dude, let's go the fuck home. And finally, the concert finally ends, and we're on our way back. And he's like, man, did y'all love that? I'm like, yeah, that was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so, come to find out, Robert Gallery, who was drafted from Iowa to the Raiders, first pick overall, is great friends, really good friends with Hetfield. And so I get, I get to go to a dinner with him way before uh, – Dan ever met him. So I'm like, so I'm sending pictures. And he's like, asshole, you didn't even fucking like him. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and then we go, we go have dinner. Uh, we're in Tahoe. We go have dinner with him, do all this shit. It's fun. And uh, Hetfield, I saw, was on the sideline in Detroit this past year. And I'm like, oh, fuck. I wonder if anybody ever came up. You know, like, oh, shit. I really didn't like that one. I mean, I love the music. I just didn't like it right in my face that morning. <laughs> <laughs> you were in a condition where Metallica was not optimal. That's not. I mean, it was not. I mean, yeah. you couldn't. You no one in their right mind would have did what I did. Like <laughs> everybody would have opted out. Instead, I was just like the road dog, and I felt like battered dog shit when it was over. <laughs> All right, so Shane, since you brought him up, the plan that brought us you as an interview is Bo's idea for a guest snake, where one guest tries to set us up with another guest. Ty Harrington set us up with you. So you just talked about Dan Ty. Campbell. You told some Seabass stories. Like, could you set us? I know he's a big-time coach now, but could you get us Dan Campbell as a guest, or is that even possible? I'll do my best to get him as a guest for you okay. guys. Um, just, God dang it. Good you luck. Talk. Put your seatbelt on. It will be longer than this one. Okay. Hey, we'll block a night. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you, tell, you tell him how much fun you had. You tell him we let you just get up and grab a beer and come back and take your time and see what happens. Can I make one request, though? Just yeah. one little request. Can we have Shane back? Because fucking A, this is fun as shit. No. I, I'll, I'll definitely be back. No I doubt. Have, Don't I, let me know. Hey, Text well, me, call a, me, whatever. Let's go to the ranch. We'll do one. We'll host it together at the ranch. 
I'll split the Wi-Fi with you for one. Yeah. <laughs> I'll bring a mobile hotspot to spend a night at the. That Electra shit ain't Rams. gonna work, bro. You guys don't want. You can't handle the truth. Oh man! Oh, man. <laughs> hey, we'll get of, tired. We'll handle all the truth. Speaking <laughs> of the truth, right. game, I got one more. I got one more for you. Since Come you on. since you started everything by showing everybody that upside down Longhorn on your wall, I gotta ask you because you were you were getting started about the time I was finishing up at A and M. I grew up an Aggie my whole life. I wasn't taught that. I, it wasn't at school around me. When do you remember Upside Down Longhorn happening? Because, my God, we do it all the damn time now. When did it start, man? <laughs> you found a way to stump him, Jeff. <laughs> Thanksgiving, 1994, Leland McElroy returned a kick for a touchdown. Boom. You is that was that the birth? That's when I came to Texas A&M. Wow! See, I don't re, why I'm I do not remember that I'm, moment. So when I'm, in the sleep, time. in the sleep, opening kickoff, I'm standing in the end zone as a recruit. Boom! Kickoff to the north. He returned it, a hundred yards touchdown. I was like, boom! I'm coming here. And he and he did that in the end zone. Yes, mm -hmm. I remember. See, I don't remember that. That's that why. Okay, wow. that was a wrap for me. And the wow. real fucked up part at that point, I was a Texas Tech fan. And like I've said, in the state of Texas, I don't give a fuck what you are. On that weekend, you are either orange or you're maroon. That's how recess is divided. <laughs> I love it. That's it. <laughs> and I was a maroon guy at that time. But Chance, you were just a Texas school whore. You were grew up a Red Raider, then you committed to the Aggies, <laughs> then you came and played for the Longhorns. <laughs> and if you'd have got the chance to transfer, you might have transferred to Baylor. The fuck I <laughs> to Baylor. Oh, hell no. Bullshit. I, that would have never happened. <laughs> That's funny. That's <laughs> funny because my uh, so Ty went to Texas. My mom played basketball at Baylor. My dad played football at Baylor. My grandpa played football at Baylor and then went to play for the Steelers. And my other grandpa went to play for Mississippi State quarterback. So everybody went to Baylor except me. I was like, fuck it. I ain't, I'm going to him. Yeah. <laughs> right. You, you guys, and Grant Taft, no. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't happen. It did not happen. Sorry. Oh, buddy. man. Shane, good, great stuff. Uh, like the guy, like Chance said, man, we'd love to have you on again. If you can hook us up with a Dan Campbell and these guys will allow another Aggie to come on the show, oh. then we would love to do it. We would love to hey. do it. He's Thanks. one of a kind, one of my favorites. I yeah. promise Chance you, I'll getting reach us. out to him. I'll reach out to him for you guys and and send you back a response. Awesome. That sounds perfect because Chance is going to get us Kyle Shanahan now that it's the off season. So yeah. we could have Shanahan and Campbell. Like we could have 49er Niner month. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> there it is. A little, little rematch. Hey, little I will say, line. and these guys know this, when they hired Dan, I don't give a fuck what anybody says about that first interview and everything else when they announced him to me that was the moment i said detroit hired the right fucking guy mm -hmm. if he embodies the city of detroit and i'm in galveston this weekend see i'm drinking my my galveston beer well, galveston mardi, mardi gras blonde yeah i'm down in galveston this weekend and i walk by and i got my bill shit on and his family stops me and they go that would look a whole lot better if it had a line on it and i said Hey, I'm not leaving my bills, but y'all got a good coach. And they said, we fucking love the guy. That was their words. We fucking old people, white hair. I was like, God damn. Okay. <laughs> and said, we fucking love him. I said, he embodies what Detroit is. So good on him. I think it's, I think it's phenomenal for this. Dude, he, he, he is awesome. He cares. He gives a shit. That's like, that's all you just give a shit. And he <laughs> cares. And he takes that city on head over heels. And he is all in. He gives a shit, and yep. we are legitimately worth a shit here our, on the our show. Our, our catchphrase is we're legitimately worth a the shit. <laughs> there we go. It fits in. It works well. All right, oh. Shane Leckler. Thank you, brother. Take care of yourself. And, uh, we'll See y'all soon. soon. Take care, guys. All right, Take care, Shane. There it is. Shane Leckler, wow. ladies and gentlemen. Shane wow. Leckler. So how did your first punter interview go, Jason? <laughs> Oh, man, that was, uh, he he seemed a little uh, put off that I brought up his career earnings. But look, man, <laughs> I don't day, think he wants the world to know he made thirty four million. The day that I make thirty four, the day that I make three million dollars, I'm gonna fucking let everybody know. Okay, <laughs> I'm gonna, it's I'm like gonna a public, let public public domain is what you're saying, right? It's a public yeah, yeah, piece yeah. of information. Only fan. Exactly. Only fan. <laughs>
By the way, our guy Sandman heard the story of leaving the Longhorn recruit and says, I approve of that behavior. It's a rivalry. All right, Sandman, <laughs> there you go. That was a pretty oh wild story. Thanks to Shane Leckler, obviously, for jumping in with us. Let's get some bills paid and maybe get caught up a little bit. We will take a, a breath here while you listen to a little prosperity roofing. Here we go. I wish mine looked like that. Inappropriate. I don't know what the big deal is. Mine used to look like that. Is your new roof what everyone's talking about? A new roof from Prosperity Roofing will certainly draw some attention. Now that's what I'm talking about. Everything important in your life happens under your roof. Let Prosperity Roofing transform your home into something to talk about. All right, it is The Outsiders brought to you by Poncho, Shane Leckler. Fantastic. I, I don't know what was better, the Seabass stories or the Dan yeah. Campbell stories, but they were all pretty damn good. There was a, there was good all around. Yeah, that was that was great stuff. Well, he's, and, he's just a good dude, right? Like, yeah. guy takes the time out of his afternoon to come talk to us. He comes into enemy territory. I mean, we started off with a couple. This shows you how fucking cool Shane Leckler is. We start off with the tech stream going, you know, throwing jabs at him, whatever. By the end of it, they're like, this dude's a fucking awesome. <laughs> yeah, this my- is great. God damn right. I love it. Do you yeah. think he keeps the, the horns down in his living room, kitchen oh, den would, all the time? Almost agree Dude, do you that. think you could I, – I don't think you could mount that both ways. I don't but, think you could do it. That's <laughs> that's heavy dedication to, the, to, to that practice. By the way, how many upside down Longhorns are there going to be in College Station in November, fellas? Good, it's going to be fantastic. Bring it on, bring it on, man. And I'm telling you, I must be. Y'all know I'm a freaky Aggie in so many ways. I just do not remember it. I remember that game he's talking about. I remember Leland going into the end zone. I don't remember Leland McElroy. I don't remember Johnny Holland. I don't remember Kevin Murray. I don't remember John Johnny Manziel, fellas. Which I don't is- remember any. Which Aggie is hysterical player. because Until just now starting to do that stuff. But here's the thing. It's to me, this is what's funny is you are a committed Aggie. You're a dedicated Aggie. You are my favorite Aggie, but that male favorite Aggie, that being said, fair. How is it that <laughs> you don't remember that game? And I remember, because at that time I was a Texas tech fan and I remember that opening kickoff and McElroy running it back. Like, I can remember sitting and watching that game at my aunt's house. Yeah. And that's the one that would be the one. Let me make sure I'm right on this. That's the one in Austin, right? 94, the kick yeah. to start the game. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, remember. The, I, I was in the opposite end zone. Maybe I turned to celebrate. Maybe that's what it was. Like, I, I wasn't watching on TV. I, I was there. And Shane's talking about field level. So he saw that angle better than I did. Maybe I just turned to celebrate every touchdown. And I did not see all the upside down Longhorns. It was like I, I was being remember, shielded from it somehow. I just remember when I multiple times I made trips to College Station when I was at UT, and every single time it wasn't the upside down thing. It was they would cut the damn horns off your sticker on your vehicle. Right, like, that happened every single. Like, now that like I remember, the, point where the last time we literally put super glue over it on the back of my truck, so yeah. if somebody was going to saw the horns off, they're going to have to work their fucking ass off to do it. But <laughs> right. like that, I remember. I remember them cutting the horns off the stickers on my truck multiple times. Yes, but you know, like those stickers cost like four bucks, so it was no big deal. It was worth it to make them have to work for it. <laughs> Oh, cannot wait for it to come back. Great to hear Shane Leckler talk about the rivalry and getting the rivalry back. And he was involved in some big time games. The Ricky break the break, break of the record game, the 97 game before that in the rain uh, when AM got the win. Ricky got hurt during that one. The 96 game, which was in Austin. And I'm, <clears throat> I can't really remember the score of that one. And then 99, the game he mentioned after the bonfire, uh, oh. he was in some some pretty uh, pretty memorable games there yep. obviously it comes back this year remember when we had him with the bad wi-fi i asked one question and i don't even know if the whole question yes. got out i was like who was the most surefire hall of fame you played with he goes i fucking played with jerry rice <laughs> yeah but, i mean but that's it funny like he, he, didn't, he didn't have to hesitate he was like i played with jerry rice yeah <laughs> oh yeah i want 
I watched the highlights the other day, the soup, the NFL films highlights of that Super Bowl, and Jerry Rice is stalking that sideline, reminding every coach they hadn't thrown in the ball enough. And then they did, and they got a touchdown out of it. Like he was still Jerry Rice, even uh, even at that point. Uh, all right, Bo. Before we get out of here, let's get uh, maybe get the people thinking a little bit about that next big time vacation. Engage Vacations can definitely help them out. I'm going to make it simple for you. B booking a vacation is a pain in the ass. Like to be honest with you, unless you have somebody like Engage Vacations. You call Chad and Teresa and the team. I just booked one for my 20th anniversary. A great trip for me and my wife to get away for a few days. All I had to do was send them where we wanted to go and what we were looking for. And within 24 hours, here's an email with five links, prices, done. Book the trip. What do you want? To, what kind of food do you want? Boom, 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 boom. Dinner reservation, done. That's what Engage Vacations does. They make vacations, vacations. They make it simple. They know all the places to go at the resort and they know which resort fits you, whether you're looking for a family vacation, a solo trip with your wife, whatever you're looking for, Engage Vacations will take care of you. Call them 512-922-3322 or just scan a little QR code right there. Get, tell them you heard from the outsiders. And somebody did scan that QR code because they're excited about the idea of a vacation. We do appreciate that. Uh, <laughs> and fellas, here's what we're going to do. Tomorrow night on the Thursday night show, we will get into a discussion that is very bizarre. But we'll get into a discussion about peanut allergies and recruiting and how a couple of former Longhorns put a story kind of back in everybody's mind uh, in the last couple of days. We'll get to that tomorrow because if we start now, it'll be midnight. Nope. By the and time. we have a special guest tomorrow night too. And we do have a special guest tomorrow night because Bo, they are retiring uh, the jersey over the weekend and we're getting like the preview interview, correct? Well, it, they're not. So Texas has too many legendary players to do the, so everybody gets their number retired. So every year they started this, what's called tradition. So on the Saturday game at Dishfalk, they have six to eight games over the course of a season. They're honoring great players on the field, wave, let everybody know about them. Uh, um, this Saturday is Justin Simmons Day uh, from the, you know, from National Championship era, great friend of mine. My really good friend. He gets a day on April 6th where we will all be okay. attendance out in left field with Mark. But Saturday is Justin Simmons Day. So we're going to have Justin on tomorrow to talk about Longhorn baseball. Nice. Good dude. Oh my God. Every, every time I talk to Justin Simmons, I end up, I end up feeling better about humanity. He's just a nice guy. He is. And he's all he's perfectly, perfectly dressed, perfectly he, dressed, like to the nines. Every oh, single yeah, second. He, out, he outdresses everyone, everyone around him. You look at him from across the room and you might think, oh, I bet that guy's got an attitude. I mean, look at him. He's dressed <laughs> like that handsome man. And then he walks over to you and starts talking. You're like, my God, this is the greatest guy I've ever met. Oh, he's phenomenal. And mm -hmm. he was phenomenal on the 40 acres. Like the things yes, he, he was did were incredible. Yeah. Uh, so we'll talk to Justin. For a guy Simmons. that, as he put it, couldn't break a pane of glass, who only th who never threw over 85 in a game at the University of Texas and somehow yeah. won 16 games in pitcher of the year, not throwing over 85. You know what they call that? That's crafty. You're just crafty. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. Very, very crafty. You got to do that. Uh, by the way, Longhorn Baseball just had a 20 to 3 win uh, yes, really in the Tuesday night game. Eight Longhorns with multiple hits, three scored multiple runs, and three had multiple RBIs. That is slaughtering somebody in a baseball game. Texas is 3 and 1 to start the year, and it's Cal Poly this weekend, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, boy in a non-con series out at the dish. So we'll talk to Justin Simmons tomorrow night, and we will get into the peanut allergy story in case you don't know the peanut allergy story. We'll try to explain it all to you uh, tomorrow night. Uh, before we get out of here, Bo, let's uh, pay a couple more bills, but also uh, we're paying bills in a way here, but it's also paying tribute to the great Jeff Onaveros, speaking of Texas right. baseball. Let's tell him about that tournament one more time here. April 25th at Forest Creek Golf Club in Round Rock. There is a QR code right there. You can hit me up at any of the social media if you want more information. I've posted it many times on my Facebook, on Twitter. There, This is the kickoff event for the Jeff Onaveras Field of Dreams Foundation to help bring specifically baseball but other youth athletics to underprivileged kids in the Central Texas area. Jeff Onaveras was a friend of mine from the age of 10 on. He passed away tragically last year. 
but this is what his family is doing to help honor his legacy, not just at the University of Texas, but in the community where he spent a lot of his time helping youth baseball. Scan the QR code. Come have a round of golf. It's Jeff Onavera's Fill the Dreams Tournament. Yes, indeed. Thanks to uh, all those folks. Shout out to the folks in Round Rock. And uh, before we get out of here, let's remind you one more time. It is The Outsiders brought to you by that shirt Chance is wearing, that shirt Bo is wearing, and the shirt Colt's wearing. That's Colt in the Fort Davis, whether you want that one or any of the other great ones. Maybe the Falfurious is more of your <laughs> speed. Maybe you want to go with something on the maroon side like Doc Hastings did. They got stuff on the purple side of things. If you're more of a TCU kind of person, if you got that Texas Tech vibe, I think they've even got bright red ones. I usually don't scroll down that far on the poncho page, but hey, whatever you, whatever you do, ponchooutdoors.com. Go check out all the designs. Thanks to Poncho for being a great sponsor and a great partner of ours. All right, I think that'll do it. We have gone well over, thanks to the great Shane Leckler, but it was fantastic. My life feels a little bit more complete. Bo Edge, thank you for starting the idea that got us Shane Leckler. That was fantastic. Hey, if it gets us Dan Campbell, <laughs> fuck on. I don't care if it gets us nobody after that. It would be great if it got us Dan Campbell, but Shane Leckler was fantastic. Those were awesome stories. I'm never going to forget Sebastian Janikowski kicking a field goal <laughs> with chili cheese nachos. I love running, it. Running down the jersey. He had, he had to say it two times. He said, big she, was a big, she was a bigger lady. <laughs> she, was, she was a bigger lady. <laughs> I'm just trying to imagine like a woman. <laughs> like once you said chili eyes. cheese nachos, you kind of implied it was a bigger lady. Yeah. I am. Like the whole thing and just right on to, to bat. Uh, that's and good aim, apparently. Apparently the woman had good aim. Uh, thanks to Shane Leckler again. <laughs> that was awesome. Uh, we'll see if maybe Dan Campbell will come on The Outsiders. You never know. You never know. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow night for that Thursday night edition. Justin Simmons will join us. We'll talk Texas baseball uh, before he gets honored over the weekend. And we will try to figure out the peanut allergy story. If you're a Longhorn fan, you shouldn't worry about the story at this point. We'll give you all those details tomorrow night. Thanks to everybody for jumping in. One more thanks before we get out of here. Uh, we were drinking tonight. We hope you were drinking something tonight. Alcohol, non-alcohol. It's a what are you drinking Wednesday. Did you run out? They've got more at Specs. No matter what you're needing, Specs same day delivery can save the day with our Specs app or online shopping. From world-class wines to hard to find spirits and craft beers to gourmet foods, delicious snacks and spectacular sweets. It's Specs. Cheers to savings. Yep. That came from Specs right there. That's a Specs product right there from the outsiders to you. There I won't is. fault them if they don't have Liberty Pop. All right. I, it's, it's not their bad. I just I love that somebody makes like an energy drink, drink bomb pop. That's awesome. <laughs> that that was a good interview, though. Shane was good. Oh, oh my, my God. God. He, he was fantastic. And uh, that is definitely, we've had plenty of great interviews on the outsiders. That definitely goes into the pile. So uh, shout out to everybody who got that one done. And most directly, thanks to, to Ty Harrington, if you're out there. Thanks yeah. for setting us up uh, and, and talking well enough about the outsiders that, you know, uh, you got a Shane Luck. We appreciate As a backup, in case we don't get Dan Campbell, we'll hit Justin Simmons up to extend the train and get a longhorn baseball player. Hey, we'll we'll keep asking everybody we get. See if they yes. can get us. Uh, see if they can get us a guest. I want them to get us Dion. I mean, fuck it. If you're gonna talk, if you're gonna name drop Dion, let's go ahead and get it. Yeah, maybe we can do Shane Leckler, Sebastian Janikowski, and Dan Campbell all sitting together at a deer lease. Like <laughs> that, that, that's that's what I'm gonna text him tomorrow. Like, hey, you said lease with Dan. Can we go ahead and make that happen next weekend? Yeah, that'll be a we'll good. We'll bring idea. our own. We'll bring our own sheets and guns. Like, we don't even need to shoot. Like, we'll bring everything oh that is a good idea all right until tomorrow night at 9 p.m oh and real quick thanks to sandman the devoted fan of the outsiders who jumped into earlier shows today to say hey is the outsider still a thing just one monday show <laughs> off and sandman was already getting the getting it's the shape president's day we were honoring the president yeah. thank and you sandman. And jason at a poker tournament <laughs> thank you sandman for caring that we weren't here we are glad to be back and we'll be back tomorrow night at nine uh, on a Thursday edition. So you take care of yourself, Sam, man. Everybody else take care of yourself as well. And to you, Chris Bennett, who made you a little comment about, hey, Shane's all right, but Michael Dixon's better. Just let the man have his moment. Can you let him be Shane wow. Leckler? Come on now.
There's no need for – actually, there is a need for that because it's a rivalry and that's a lot of fun. Shout out to you too, Chris Bennett, and all the great fans of The Outsiders. I'm going to shut up now. We are The Outsiders, and we are legitimately worth a shit, and we are –